Hello guys, after my last post I realized that not many people know anything about the flat field node and it's a quite powerful tool we have in Substance Designer. So let's take a look at it. First, how does it work? It receives a grayscale input, yes, that in this case is here in the edge digit, and it reads the shapes divided by one or by at least one pixel of distance of completely black. Yes. So in here it's gonna read this shape because we have all white, yes, we have all one value, and we have a space that is in black. So if we change to the flat field, we will see that it's doing the shape. It's right here. Now, if I rate that space, yes, over zero, meaning it stops being completely black, meaning I can blur it, for example, it's gonna break the whole system. In this case, let's do it a little bit more, maybe. There we go. This is how it looks when the flat field is not taking the right information from its input. So remember that every time you want to use the flat field, be sure to actually have a space. Even if it's too small, it's going to work. Like if I put this to 0.5, it's going to still work because it has like uh, still the space it needs. But make sure that always if you are like blurring this, uh, to use the levels later to reshape this and leave at least one pixel of space. So flood fill is uh, it's not a node that we will acti actively use, like for example a histogram scam or a level, uh, but it's it's more like a door. So it opens the door to many nodes. Yes, and I'm gonna start removing these ones actually, so you can see actually the change each of them does. So. The first one is gonna be the flat fill to gradient. An amazing node that has well it has many uses, but the two uses I mostly give it is first one height variation. So it's gonna help us to give variation to our height map. If you can see here, you can see the variation we are creating. Now on top of this, this node not only helps us with variation. If you take a look to it uh, really deep, you can see that it only has a random seed generator. It doesn't have any kind of uh, parameters, so we don't actually have control of how much we want it to be in each state or how much do we want it to affect our rocks. So in order to fix that, what we do is we copy that node, as I did here, yes, and we change the random seed. And then we apply a histogram scan with a high contrast and we plug that into the opacity. So now we are choosing, let's exaggerate this further, we are choosing which rocks are actually going to be affected by this and we can change this with a random seed too. Now in this case we are not gonna use it, at least not yet. Flat fit on the gradient is a great node. It's gonna generate for each of our shapes a random angle variation. As you can see here, we can control the the the, the angle of our uh, of our shapes, but right now we are not going to do that. We're going to leave it at random, and we are going to increase the multiple value, and you're going to see how it affects our mesh or our height variation. So this does not only work for creating variation height. I mean, there's many things we can do with it, as for example, creating rocks, as I did around here. Let's take a look to this first. So what I did was creating four different flood fields, yes, having all of them the angle variation at one, and I changed the random seed, so each shape has a random variation of angle, and I started blending them with the, the min node. Finally, I apply all of that to a mean door a mean dark node that connects with the main light of our of our shape and if I start playing with this you see that we start creating some kind of rocky shape and the more we push in the more it's gonna look like a rock so 
so it has its uh, own procedural elements or tools let's say that will help us to build better things because right now I can change I can basically change one of these and I can change all the rocks and its shape we are not making like major changes but we are doing some uh, important ones to this finally one of the notes that I really love uh, of this pair is the flood field to random color and I'm gonna show you why I love it so much so if you have checked my latest post this is one of the ways of creating your own random cracks so we are gonna change this here to edge detect and we are gonna create our own cracks so let's set it to 0.5 let's do a safe transform in this case because I don't want to regenerate this and change all of this we are gonna just make things smaller I'm gonna put it here drag it here and we are gonna invert this we're gonna warp uh, yeah we're gonna warp this via cloud noise to to make an actual an actual oh wait sorry it was directional work we're gonna directional work this by a cloud node to make the actual effect of the crack let's do it a little bit more, more around there and we're gonna leave it like this for the moment so when we are gonna apply a crack if I apply them now you will see that these cracks will continue like they will have a continuation even if they are split by a shape so you see that this crack comes around here and then this goes here and follows down here and goes again to the other rock so it doesn't have sense because this is not how cracks work in real world so what we are going to do is after the directional warp we are going to create a vector warp grayscale so a vector warp is as works as its name uh, suggests so we get a grayscale info input yes that is going to be warped by the value of our vector map yes in this case being the vector map this color map we created before allowing us to uh, allowing us to warp our cracks by each shape individually so now we have cracks in all of our rocks but they are not continuing in each other sometimes you might have some spaces like this you see but this is because in your image you have both of them with a green value and they are quite alike actually in fact if you see why well, you have one two three uh, rocks that are green and the line continues in the same direction in the three of them you can change the random seed and see if that uh, helps to change it most of times it will work but sometimes when you have too much shapes in in one texture this tends to happen now we don't want, as I said before, we don't want uh, cracks in all of our rocks. So what we're gonna do is again we're gonna copy our flood fields in random, uh, random gray screen. We're gonna create a histogram scan. Take it to the end of the line, upgrade the contrast, contrast, and start choosing where we want our cracks. Now there's something really nice about this and is that this is not the only way of using flood fill now this is like the most basic way of using it so let's say yes I have cracked this stone around here and it's completely cracked you know each of these parts of the stone are gonna start to move on their self not as a, as a whole as they did before so one great way of showing that is by taking the the output of the node where we are subtracting our cracks create a histogram scan with high contrast again and start playing with this so now if you check we have the same rocks but with a mask and we can repeat the process by creating another flood field that will give us the information we need now what can we do with it well, we can use again a uh, flood field to gradient, create several uh, angle variations, and plug it in again by 
and multiply. Now the problem is that this is again affecting everything and we don't want it to affect everything. We only want to affect the broken ones. So we're gonna get the mask that we built before and reuse it here. And as you see, the pieces are broken. Have different height variation. Maybe these rocks won't be as much like visual impacting but when you're working with something like tiles let's say I break our nodes uh, here I take them here this actually makes a difference let's say you're doing a tile path and you want to showcase which parts are actually having it okay oh we broke the we broke the flop field so we're gonna have to a little bit there we go it's working again 2.5 4.6 there we go so now it's working again so when you're working maybe on a tile for something like that it's it's good that you know these things because it's gonna help you to break everything down. Yes, to create variation in everything you make without having to complicate over complicate yourself too much. I hope this uh, video was of your liking and that you enjoy it. Um, please leave a like and share.